to update on the summer recreation program with Red Gremlin, Brian Rhodes. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for your time. Um, Meg and I are excited to give you an update here. So the numbers were different at each location, so I broke it down per park. So here's uh, Lincoln Park, which is Tuesday's attendance. First week, we had 37. Second week, we had 77. Third week, 71. Fourth week, 77. And unfortunately, week five and six had to be canceled due to rain. Sorry, back. On Wednesdays, we were at Clifford Park. We started the season on Wednesdays with 93. Then we increased to 115, uh, down to 90, up to 122, to 114, and then our record high, 136. And finally, Casey Park on Thursdays. Week one, we had 43. Week two, 74. Week three, 39. That was a heavy rain right before start time. Week four was 74. Week five, 80. And week six, 83. So our attendance totals were 1,325. 1, um, and 478 different kids attended the program throughout the summer. We did two surveys, one for parents and one for participants. And in the participant survey, we asked, did you have fun at summer recreation? 100% said yes. Will you come back next summer? 100% said yes. What were your favorite activities? Top three were culinary, playground, and sports. And what would you like added? Top three were nothing, swimming, and water activities. And finally, what would you have done if you didn't come to summer rec? Nothing, play video games, and watch TV. And we also gave the parents and guardians a survey. How satisfied were you with the overall program? 100% circled highly satisfied. How satisfied were you with the activities offered? 100% circled highly satisfied. Will you, will you have your child attend next summer? 100% circled definitely. Um, what were your child's favorite activities? The top three answers were culinary, gaga ball, and sports. And what changes or additions would you like to see in the future? Uh, the top three answers were no changes, add more days, and add an additional park. Now I'll show you some of our daily activities. Of course, arts and crafts. We had a wide variety, but making bracelets was the most popular, of course. Board games, we had all the classics. Um, we had a reading activity this summer um, along with the Auburn and Large City School District. I had written a grant for um, the Dollar General Summer Literacy Program, which was awarded to us um, to use at the Summer Recreation Program. They provided books, reading games, prizes, blankets, scoop chairs, and also a visit from Captain Jack, the storyteller. Um, the kids enjoyed reading to each other. Some of them read alone, but it, I thought the highlight was when we had some older kids reading to some younger kids, so that was pretty awesome. Field and court games, we had everything from tennis to kickball, wiffle ball, basketball, soccer, and flag football. We had gaga ball this summer. Um, the kids really loved it. It's a enclosed activity similar to dodgeball. Um, kids have to hit the ball. At, to, in order to get out, you have to get hit below the knees. Um, they had a lot of fun with it. So it was just another way for them to move and be active. <laughs> We had playground time. Um, the kids liked just playing on the playground, some free time for them to be kids. <laughs> and our special activities, um, we'll start with the most popular, culinary. Um, Flick is a nonprofit ran by Fran and Chef Nick DeLoya. Flick focuses on nutrition-based education and culinary skill development. Um, Fran does all the program planning, and Chef Nick is the culinary nutrition instructor. I'll show you some of our... So on week one, kids made yogurt parfait. Week two was uh, tomato and corn salsa. 
Week three was cold noodle salad. Week four was seasonal veggie maki, which is sushi. Week five, stone fruit chutney. And week six was a smoked tomato tapenade. They're all delicious. Um, every Tuesday at Lincoln Park, Mary from PlaySpace organized fun projects for the kids like drip art, homemade frisbees, and little sailboats made out of pool noodles. The Seymour Library joined us on Thursdays. They always brought a story. They had an activity and a craft that connected to the story each time. Uh, Double Days players came to all three parks the first week to play wiffle ball with the kids. This was a huge hit in the surveys from parents and participants, so I'll try to get them more involved next summer. Home Depot joined us on the very first day and they brought a wooden boat kit so the kids had fun putting together the kits and taking them home and I can attest that they do float. <laughs> We also had um, the coach from Auburn Field Hockey join us um, during one of the Thursday activities to lead some calisthenic drills with the kids. And then the New York State Police joined us. Trooper James Russell showed the kids the drone, um, gave an example of it. It was very windy that day, so he didn't fly it as much as he was planning on, but talked to the kids about how the drone is used. Uh, Becky McCormick from Snap Ed came to promote healthy eating choices. She brought some healthy snacks for kids to enjoy. There's some watermelon and a strawberry smoothie. Fire safety with Auburn Fire Department. The fire department came to all three parks on July 25th, 26th, and 27th to teach the kids about fire safety and show them how the trucks and the hoses work. It was a lot of fun, but no one had more fun than Justin Wood. <laughs> Perform for, for, Perform for Purpose joined us on Wednesdays, um, giving the kids lessons in drums, ukulele, guitar, keyboard, and vocal. The Cuga County Health Department Kids on Wheels program came to all three parks. They provided bike, scooter, skate safety tips along with a course that the kids got to ride through and bike helmets were also given out to any child that needed one. Uh, Deputy, Deputy Jacob Sloeb came and talked to the kids about the job of the canine and how he helps the deputies. This, kind, this canine's name was Pitt and Pitt showed the kids how he can track a scent and react to some commands from Deputy Sloeb. Sports for All sponsored tennis and pickleball lessons at, on, at Clifford and Lincoln Park. There were tennis lessons, and then at Casey Park, we had some pickleball lessons. United Way Day of Caring on Thursday, August 3rd. We had over 70 of the kids volunteer to clean up Casey Park, and United Way donated all the T-shirts and snacks for the volunteers. Um, the Captain Jack Storyteller joined us at Clifford Park, and that was paid for by the Dollar General Literacy Grant. YMCA Swimming Safety um, collaborated with us at all three parks also. Mrs. Swab, a lifeguard at the YMCA, taught the kids pool and water safety, gave them some tips and tricks, and reminded the older kids, uh, gave the older kids some tips on how to keep younger kid, kids that are in their presence safe around water. So that was ni a nice connection for all ages. Um, employees from Nucor came to give the kids back to school safety tips, and they also got to try on some of Nucor's personal protective equipment. Um, not only did Nucor donate their time, but they also paid for all of our operating supplies, like uh, including the Gaga ball pet. So thank you. Um, we had tie-dye, which was paid for by Career Plastics. Kids could bring their own shirt, and we had a tie-dye station for them. And the egg drop. The kids in, uh, got into six teams to engineer a container that could uh, withstand a high fall and protect the egg. We had all kinds of materials for them, like foam, felt, cotton balls, bubble wrap. 
Then Rich Siemens from DPW went up in his bucket and dropped it. And then I opened them and four broke and two survived. It was a lot of fun. We had Falcon Park Fun Day on Thursday, August 10th. We had a visit from Abner. We were able to use the clubhouse to do some arts and crafts. The kids just had fun running around on the field. And we um, were able to rent an incredible um, obstacle course that the kids loved burning some energy in. <laughs> The um, popsicles were purchased by a gift card that Wegmans donated. We had popsicles on Falcon Park Fun Day and popsicles throughout the summer for the kids. Um, we had the APD kickball game. Special thanks to Chief Slayton for allowing Officer Bennett and Officer Flickner to hang out and play kickball with the kids. It was a highlight of the day for sure. So we had many local agencies and businesses partner with us this summer, um, donating financially or with time to join with, um, for activities. So thank you to the City of Auburn, Newcore, PlaySpace, Seymour Library, Perform for Purpose, Cuga County Sheriff's Office, New York State Police, City of Auburn Fire Department, Cornell Cooperative Extension, Cuga County's SNAP Ed Program, Cuga County Health Department, Sports for All, Home Depot, Auburn Double Days, Auburn Police Department, Rotary, Courier Plastics, the United Way, and the YMCA. And now I'd just like to thank our staff from left to right. There's Brody Ryan, Aiden Archer, Riley Catafano, Reagan Pokovich, Samantha Catafano, Kathy Otterson, Sandy Deck, and Katie Verdi. They were outstanding. So um, just in closing, Mayor Quill, City Manager Dygert, Mr. Mason, City Council, and Mr. Talbot, your support of the Summer Recreation Program led to its success. The children of the city benefited from your willingness to support a program that was geared to them. I'm sure that most of the issues that you deal with on a daily basis are considered big people problems. So supporting our program for our youth is something that all of our families and residents can be grateful for. We were able to give a diverse group of children a place to play, interact, and engage with each other. Kids were off of technology, not complaining, and having fun. Both Brian and I loved the fact that our own children were able to make new friends and interacted with kids they wouldn't meet in their elementary schools. It's cool when they see kids in the community and tell me they saw a friend from Summer Rec. Um, I grew up in a very small town and my parents instilled in me a strong love of community. I'm proud to call Auburn my home and love that I'm able to be part of one of the many great programs that make Auburn great. And we've already started plans for 2024. <laughs> Just comments, bravo on everything you've done. You know, this is something that means a lot to council. We remember our youth going to um, the parks and, um, you know, years ago this was cut. And um, although it took time, it's back. And it's great to see this. So, so thank you both for doing such a great job to make it such a success and and leveraging all these community partners to make it that much better so thank you and keep going and you definitely have the support of uh, of, of this council and we're, we were we're so happy for you and the children of auburn to have this opportunity and and i just want to say bravo thank you thank, thank you, you. In my mind, there's nothing to add to what Councilor <laughs> Cutting said. He said it well and said it very eloquently. So, but thank you. It, it does mean a lot to everyone. And uh, you got to get a little more pickleball in Councilor Cutting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, one of my last parting requests: we get some more pickleball. So, thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you for being Thanks. with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. They say that right, Councilor. That's fine. Yes. Yeah. Nice. 
Auburn Conservation Corps Summer Camp Recap by Councilor Terry Cuddy and Dr. Walt Eichmann. Mm, Terry, Councilor? Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll get this started. I, um, I made a video and um, it's a tough act to follow that. I just <laughs> want to say that they, they did such a great job. So, so I made a video, um, but before I show the video, I wanted to uh, recognize, um, uh, number one, my colleagues in, in making this possible, and uh, one of the campers that, that, that are here. I invited the whole camp to come in, but first, first um, I'd like to introduce uh, Caleb Boha, who was uh, a fellow uh, teacher in the program, um, and Dr. Walt Aikman, who uh, also was the, really the, the, the main uh, force in, t in, in the content uh, developing the curriculum for the students. Um, and we have Jackson uh, DeForest. You want to stand up, Jackson? And, and, uh, and you'll see Jackson featured in the video quite, uh, quite often in, the, uh, in, in, in this video. But, I'll be happy to field questions afterwards, and um, you know, and we'll go from here. <laughs>
Drones can be used to assess urban forests and assist with watershed land conservation and protection. After both of these demonstrations, we continue to collect temperature data at Casey Park. Day three, we started at the North Street Cemetery to learn ways to manage invasive tree species and continue our temperature data collection in the urban forest. Dr. Aitman demonstrated how to identify and control invasive tree species using a mechanical method. Nearby at the Willard Chapel, the campers rested under the bird oak tree on the former Auburn Theological Seminary campus to hear about the Willard Chapel from the staff. We then went to the heart of downtown Auburn to collect temperature readings there. The campers collected more data at Hoops Park and throughout adjacent neighborhoods. We ended day three behind Herman F. School where there was a large patch of the highly invasive plant species called Japanese knotweed. Day four, the fourth and final day of the Auburn Conservation Course summer camp was started on the west side of the Mill Street Dam and later moved to the east side. We continued to collect temperature readings throughout the morning. Dr. Aikman then demonstrated the various ways to manage invasive shrub species. In the afternoon, we were greeted by Councilor Giannettino before going to collect more temperature readings on our way to the urban wetland on the arterial west corridor between Washington and McMaster Streets. This concludes the recap of the inaugural year the Auburn Conservation Corps Summer Camp. Yes, can you, can you tell us? It's wonderful video. Oh, great. Thank I mean, you. I, did anybody get college credit for that? Because it looked like... It was did. pretty intense. Yeah. So uh, they didn't get college credit, but some of the, um, some of the campers um, were members of the National, Technical, uh, National Honor Society. So they did get, um, I, they did get um, um, certificates talking about the hours of work that they did. Oh, so, so some of the work that they did besides planting trees was uh, data collection for um, the, what Dr. Aikman will, will uh, compile and use for um, you know, information as to where we would want to plant more trees throughout, throughout the city. So they did receive a certificate that detailed the amount of hours that they spent um, helping the city uh, collect that data and learn about you know, learn about the urban tree forest. So I, I'd like to help next year. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, can you just explain, you referenced next year level two. Can you explain a little bit about a that? Student, so um, uh, Caleb Boha and uh, uh, Walt Aikman and myself, as we stated, uh, this is a pilot program. So um, we're still going to keep it a week long, but maybe have two sessions. Um, one uh, for the younger people, for younger uh, campers, because we felt like some of the uh, content might have been a little too advanced for some of the younger students. 
And as you would see in one of the comments, one of the it's, some of the other campers felt that the content really um, was geared towards them. So I, I felt we did a really good job in in um, in uh, creating a curriculum that that did meet diverse audiences, but we did see value in having perhaps two levels next year, and we brought that up to campers. And one in the exit survey, uh, we asked if, if we were gonna do another year, would they wanna be involved in a second year? So, um, you know, that that's something we would like to consider uh, next year. But having it still be one week, but like for beginners and for, for you know, uh, maybe some campers that are a little bit older and, and, and do some of those more sophisticated, um, you know, mathematics. There's a lot of, there was a math, a lot of math involved in some of the, <laughs> some of them. So it was, it was very, I, I learned a lot too. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's a great program. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, is Dr. Aikman? Did you want to add anything, uh, Dr. Aikman or Mr. Paul? Go ahead, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so part of the goal here too is to partner hopefully with the Auburn and Large City School District to help fulfill. Um, New York State has come out with kind of an additional thing that can be added to students' diplomas called the Seal of Civic Readiness. Um, and the goal here is to help use this program to get students to receive that Seal of Civic Readiness. Um, and uh, myself and uh, Jeff Albarisi at the uh, junior higher working on a program together to try and get students there. So this is a wonderful program um, to try and get students involved in the community and to understand the importance of environmentalism in our own backyard. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Caleb. And uh, Jackson, thank you for, for helping uh, Auburn out by joining this camp. and. Uh, you know, maybe we'll see you next year. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just add, uh, sure. I know it was in the video there, but um, in addition to the support of the members of council and the city of Auburn, uh, this program benefited from a grant received from the Emerson Foundation, yes. which was uh, coordinated through the Auburn Beautification Commission. And there's a couple of Auburn Beautification Commission members with us tonight, Judy Bryant and Dr. Leah Weinberger here. And um, just wanted to thank them for their support of the program. Yes, I, that was the last part of the video. Yeah. And I, I, I wanted to make sure that thank you, uh, uh, Clerk, for, for mentioning that. But yes, <clears throat> and at the end of the video, I, I, I'm, I wanted to make sure that, you know, there were there were partners as, as well in this um, this this project and you know, was, do you remember the amount of the grant I think it was $2,500 grant from the Emerson Foundation 3,000 3, yes and that was for the technical equipment the um, pocket lab um, sensors that measured the heat data so great thank you thank you counselor and everyone else to me this is great the last two presentations because they're they were about they, they involve the youth, but it's homegrown. It's, it's, it's things that we've done. We haven't gone out, hired consultants or anyone. We have volunteers and uh, adults from all different walks of life participating and trying to make things better. To me, that's, that's as important as anything else. So I, I do want to commend all of you and say thank you for it. That was, that was great. Did they, was there any pickleball breaks or? No pickleball no breaks. No citizen stone, all right. All set, counselor. All set. All right, thank you. Uh.